Welcome back to another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm your host, Stephen Roy Goodman. I'm here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at Franklin and Marshall College, where we're gonna be speaking about meaningful town gown ties. And I've got with me two guests today, Barbara Altman, who's the president of Franklin and Marshall, and Deneen Sirachi, who is the mayor of Lancaster. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Delighted glad. to be here. Yes, glad to be here. Well, thank you both for coming on. Maybe if we could start with you, um, since we are at Franklin Marshall, mm -hmm. how do you view this partnership that you have with the city and where would you like it to go? Good leading question. So first of all, Franklin and Marshall has the incredible luxury of being located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster is one of our biggest assets and it's very, very important to me that the college be an active, helpful partner to the city in all ways. You will know from your long work in higher ed, Steve, that many liberal arts colleges were deliberately founded outside urban centers. The idea was to get people away, youngsters away, so that they could study and indulge in intellectual debate for four years. Now, it's really incredibly important that we work with our civic entities. And so for us to be in a campus, on a campus that merges right into the city, gives us a foothold to do good, to train our students well, to give them a real life environment to work in. And so it's a real privilege to be here. And Mayor Sirachi and I have worked together closely since she was elected and I arrived. Do you agree with that? I do. And I'd also just want to give um, Barbara a shout out as the first woman president uh, coming sure. on board to Franklin and Marshall. And the, mm -hmm. there had been one other woman that was pre um, mayor of the city of Lancaster. But I feel especially proud to be sitting here, two women uh, leading a city and a college and figuring out how we partner together to both um, improve and benefit the city and its residents, but also improve um, individual students and collectively the workforce um, that is heading out into uh, jobs. Well, you just raised the issue of you both being women. Do you think that's a significant issue relative to the way you get along? Because there have been tensions, as you know, uh, many town gown tensions around the, around the country. Yeah. I don't know if it's because we're women that we get along. I think our strategic priorities are aligned and we communicate well. And when there's things that come up, Barbara calls me or I call her. I would say that it's a lot more about the strategic alignment and a shared vision for how we want to both be elevating the city. And I know that when the city is strong, f and benefits from that. And when f and is strong, the city benefits from that. So I think we're very clear about our the intersections. And, and speaking of that intersection, one of the things that you have a fiduciary responsibility to do is to make sure that Franklin and Marshall continues. It's a very old college, one of the oldest colleges in the United States. Mm -hmm. But your fiduciary responsibility is to the institution. How do you view that relative to making sure the city grows along with mm -hmm. Franklin and Marshall? That's a good question, and it points directly to the degree to which we are intertwined. We have a workforce here. I employ about 650 people. Those people are important citizens in the city, not because of what they do, but because they contribute to the local economy. They live here, they buy houses here, they raise their children here. So we are inevitably uh, part of the economic engine of the city of Lancaster. And as Mayor Sirachi said, the fortunes of f and really rise and fall with the fortunes of the city. So some of my predecessors had really important programs and initiatives to allow, for example, for a while, there was a, a program to help f and employees buy properties near the campus. Two presidents ago, President John Fry completely rebuilt with a lot of work with the city, with the state government, with other partners, the north end of campus, which benefited the city. So there's no way in which we're not intertwined. Well, speaking of that intertwining or not intertwining, mm -hmm. um, there have been instances when a number of colleges around the country don't view it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't speak to those <laughs> other institutions, but I don't see why we wouldn't want to work as closely and productively with our city entity as possible. I want to go back for just a minute to a question you asked Mayor Sirachi, which was, why is it that we, we have such a great working relationship? I think we both arrived um, open, with an open mind about how best to allow our institutions, the city and the college, to thrive. 
Deneen started her job as mayor about eight months before I arrived as president. It was a great honor to have her at my inauguration yeah. in October of 2018. And the, the just the understanding that the city includes the college and that the, the college really includes our surrounding neighborhoods and the welfare of the city is just bedrock for both of us. I yes. Think. And I think it's really given way to the relationships that we have because the faculty you know, are some of my neighbors. Um, they uh, sit on boards, commissions, and authorities for the city. So there's, yes, they're living here, they're working here, they're contributing economically, but that it extends to the students. So I can tell you that because of um, the Ware Institute and other efforts to really involve students in the work of this in the city, that now I know some of the students that are here, that are studying here, that I see them on the street and I recognize them and they recognize me because we are working in uh, tandem with one another to the benefit of the city. And I think that that's something that can happen uh, in a city that's sized like Lancaster and, and in an institution that's sized like FNM. We're not a really big city, but we're not uh, a small city either. And so that really gives opportunities for the students to have experiences that they might not have elsewhere because it's just not that kind of sweet spot that in terms of the size and scope of what Lancaster is. We have an international uh, reputation. We have a national reputation. We have a much higher percentage of international students than many of our peer schools. But it's also really important to realize that we have in our student body at any given time about 100 students right from Lancaster, another 150 from the immediate surrounding counties. So we also have a very firm foothold here. And we want to be educating the best and brightest of Lancaster and the surrounding county, as well as our many international and nationally diverse students. So that's one thing. The other is that students fall in love with Lancaster. They didn't grow up here. They come here. And the easy access to the city and the many opportunities here makes them stay. So we have something like 2,700 alumni in the immediate area. It's our fourth largest alumni chapter right here. And they work in City Hall and they create businesses here and they take root here. So people love it here and they make their homes and their lives here. But speaking of the lives, mm -hmm. what I wanted to get to, if I could, was the issue of just the average citizen who has nothing to do with Franklin and Marshall, who lives a few miles from where we're sitting. How do they benefit tangibly? So maybe they'll come here for a cultural program, but how do they benefit and how do you pitch this kind of partnership to that average citizen? I mean, for me, pitching this to the average citizen is a lot about the economic impacts. I mean, these uh, average citizens are probably neighbors with somebody who might work at FNM or has some connection to FNM. And so I just talk about this as like, yes, we're this is an institution of higher education and there are students that are coming here and we need to be an attractive place that students want to come. But Barbara also needs to attract talent to work here and they need a place to live. And so I think about that just the way that I think about any other company that we're talking to that has roots in Lancaster or who is considering moving to Lancaster. This is an attractive, affordable place uh, to come and live. And that is definitely part of the conversation. So just for the average person, I talk about it as any other business, but this isn't just any other business because there are thousands of students that are coming through the doors of FNM and they are having an experience, a small city experience. So whether that means that we're doing a voter engagement with students or they're coming downtown to um, be part of an internship and an organization that partners with the city or they're involved in the city's own cultural activities and things like that, we want to embrace them for the time that they are here and for them to have an experience of what it means to be in community, not just the community of your college, because that that is important, but it is very clear that once you graduate, you will be living in some community. How, how do you uh, interact with that community? How do you become engaged in that community? How do you know your local government in that community? How do you understand uh, the issues, the local issues that uh, affect day-to-day -day life. And so FNM students weigh in on those things here in the city of Lancaster because they live in our neighborhoods. Uh, and I think that's important. They also, 
you know, um, spend money at our businesses and they are part and parcel of this community. And there's a lot of businesses that rely on students. And, you know, just coming from the perspective of being mayor, I know there's a lot of mayors that don't have great town gown relationships, but many of them recognize not only the economic impact of having a strong town gown relationship, but they are more and more seeing the benefit of having not just thinking about it from an economic perspective, but in, in a community service perspective and it really engaging uh, the um, future workforce in those communities in meaningful ways, um, it, it's become a differentiator for a lot of institutions of higher ed. And I was telling um, Barbara just before we came up that, you know, I'm a parent who's now shopping for colleges right now with my 17 year old. And it's very interesting because I have a perspective as mayor in this town gown relationship with F and M, and so I'm like asking questions that I don't know that other parents are asking in terms of like, what is your relationship with your local government? And my daughter is just, you know, like, please, mom, you know. But that's part of it, you know. Like, I want to know that there's strength there because where there's othering, where there are these are the students, and this is everybody else, and and I've seen that in communities, you know, where it's just there is no connection. Um, it's not good. It's not good for the students. They don't care about the community in the same way. They're not as respectful to the neighborhoods in which they're living or passing through. And that is not the case here. These students are welcomed by the city. Um, and I think that they experience, the students experience that welcome and in return um, are much more uh, engaged and involved and recognize that their neighbors are like, you know, your neighbors at home. In other communities, that is not the case. So a huge percentage of our students do community service and internships in the immediate community. Every sports team takes on uh, a, a partnership with a particular community organization and does volunteer hours. We have the institute that Deneen referred to, the Ware Institute for Civic Engagement, which has been up and running a long time and was in fact funded by our local neighbors, Paul and Judy Ware. And one of their programs is F&M Works in Lancaster, which is a select program where students are paid by the college to do work with public entities, nonprofit entities here in town on the social good. There are so many ways in which our students and our faculty percolate out into the community. Most recently, we've had the Center for Sustained Engagement with Lancaster, which was funded by the Endeavor Foundation out of New York. That funding has come to an end, but the work continues. And it had three points of focus, all of which were lined up to meet with the mayor's uh, primary objectives for the city. One was poverty and inequality. One is public art, and the third is environmental sustainability. So one of the big projects there was doing lead poisoning abatement, lead abatement in the houses in the older sections of the city. And that's just one example. So there's a lot of ways in which we were already doing this work, and we've been able to give it greater prominence and put more resources behind it. And how welcome are citizens, regular citizens, to, to come to events on campus here? Oh, we love it when they come. So I meant to say that the, the college's campus is really a public amenity. We have an open campus. We adjoin Buchanan Park, which we maintain. There's an award-winning dog park just outside my <laughs> office. Um, we have, we're at an arboretum. Um, so there are many, many community residents who come here to walk, to bring their children to play, to walk their dogs, to run through campus. Our track on the corner of College Avenue and Harrisburg Ave is also a public amenity. The local track club trains there. Um, we get all kinds of residents who come to football games and soccer games and lacrosse games and basketball games. So we do add both a natural environment where people can uh, recreate and we have all sorts of as you alluded to earlier, cultural programming and really great Division Three sports. We've got a very uh, successful athletics department and a number of the residents are regulars at the games. What about courses? Could mm -hmm. a regular citizen take a course with some students here? That is not as well developed as we'd like it to be. And in fact, just before I came up to meet you, Steve, we were meeting again about 
developing a lifelong learning program with Lancaster, and that's something that we'd like to get going quickly. We have um, both a, an intellectually curious populace here. We also have a very high number of retired people, um, many of whom are well-educated and seeking lifelong learning opportunities to learn more, to bring their own life experience to bear. So that's coming up. Next time we talk to you, I'll have more to tell you on that. Fair enough. And you mentioned people who are retired. Uh, one of the alums I spoke with before coming here uh, said that he liked Lancaster, Lancaster because of the great stuff that you could do as a retired person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is, I mean, Lancaster has made I don't know, U.S. News and World Report, best place to retire for multiple years. We have a growing retirement community here in Lancaster that is moving to downtown. So we have some new facilities that have just been added and some new construction that's going to be coming online. But I think that that, um, that is definitely having institutions of higher education is an amenity that people think about when they're looking for a community where they can retire. We also have the Fulton Theater and many other cultural opportunities in the city itself. And one of those other amenities is uh, Franklin and Marshall College. So it's definitely a, a selling point uh, as people are thinking about where they want to retire. And Lancaster is um, making all the lists. I should add that um, some, uh, I'm in my sixth year now, about year two, I asked all of my senior staff to choose something in Lancaster that they wanted to get behind and to serve on boards. So we have a lot of our vice presidents and other senior leaders actively engaged in boards, mm -hmm. in local endeavors, nonprofits and others. And I sit on two local boards and two, one regional, one national board as well. So we're really interested in helping and uh, in staying close. We have a big workforce preparation initiative. It's really future of work, knowing that one of the things that's most important to families looking for colleges like you are now yes. is to realize that the return on investment, fi financial return on investment is very high for this kind of education. And then of course there's quality of life as well. But it's really important that we demonstrate how the education you get at Franklin and Marshall immediately prepares students to move fluidly through a constantly changing work environment. And in fact, the preparation they get in our programs is better than training in just one area which could quickly become outdated or obsolete. So we wanna demonstrate you know, for example, I often raise my hand jokingly in front of students and say, look, my undergraduate and graduate degrees are in 14th and 15th century French poetry, and I got a job. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it always gets a laugh. But in fact, it's a real life example of it's not what you study, it's how you study and how you learn to learn. And so we want to show them that they can move fluidly, fluidly into the workforce from here. But as you well know, that's a very tough sell it is. in a lot of the country. So it's not just a challenge for Franklin Marshall. It's a challenge right. for many liberal arts colleges. And I dare say it's a challenge for many research institutions as well, yep. for parents who are searching for universities with their sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody who is, would challenge that and say, well, yes, I understand what you're saying, but the ROI is important to me, and Franklin Marshall costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And why would I spend that kind of money if I could go to a school that is less money? Well, we've got a lot of data. And you're right, it's a hard sell. But I, I'm still puzzling, along with all of my fellow presidents, about how we make this argument well. The data is, is um, absolutely self-evident. Well, no matter what a family invests, whether they're paying full sticker price for education or whether their education is heavily discounted and we give very generous financial aid, no matter whether you, are, you pay the full ride or you're heavily subsidized, your earnings potential is hugely increased with the power of this degree. And that's judged on the success of our alumni starting at 10 years out and beyond. The best possible proof for us, though, Steve, is exactly to point to the many stories of what our alumni are doing. So Wyatt, who's working in Mayor Sirachi's office, 
the woman who founded a bicycle nonprofit shop here in town, the alumni who started an e-commerce art business to support artists to connect them with collectors who are just the beginning of a collecting career, the English major who now runs a multi-billion dollar microchip business in the Bay Area, the anthropology major who led the SEC and is now um, uh, very highly ranked in the Bloomberg organization. If we tell those stories, that's the best possible explanation of what the return on investment is. And we have thousands of those stories among our 30,000 alumni. Fair enough. And I think for the record, it's only fair to say that that is so to a certain extent, because one of the guests who was on our show many years ago, who came with one of your predecessors, was a student back then, yes. who's now a trustee. Yes, exactly. Eric Franklin and Marshall. Exactly. Sean Jenkins. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. Our youngsters do very well. There's someone very um, elevated in the Shapiro legislature right now here in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. who's been out for mm -hmm. 12 Akbar. years, Akbar yeah. Hussein, who is mm -hmm. now a policy advisor for Governor Shapiro, and in fact led his campaign. So they tend to be precocious in their assumption of leadership and responsibility. And um, these are simply, I'll just put in a little plug here, these, these are the best undergraduates I've ever seen. We attract hardworking, intelligent, ambitious students who are open-minded and who are willing to work and learn from each other, work with and learn from each other, and that's what really launches them. Do you agree with this assessment as the mayor? Do you see Franklin and Marshall in that light, or do you see Franklin and Marshall as the neighbors that you were referring to a second ago? I see Franklin and Marshall as a partner in the city and both, well, in in several different directions. So we talked about the economic direction. I, t I think about them as a good neighbor. You know, when there are issues that come up, we address them. I think about them in terms of being a resource for our uh, pipeline for employment. In, and we know that nationally we are have a very uh, low unemployment rate right now. And so people are clamoring for talent. And I think the kind of talent that is coming out of an academic institution in Lancaster, coupled with their experience of living in Lancaster uh, makes for a very well-rounded student um, and uh, first-time employee. And so we've seen that time and time again. Um, and I, I benefit, I mean, we, we benefit as a city with both employees that are coming from Lancaster, but also recognizing their, their impact in other organizations across our community and our county. So I think that I don't, I don't see... I mean, I know I talk to a lot of my peers who have really, you know, um, challenging relationships, um, town gown relationships. And I will tell you that there was a period of time that that it, that was the case here in Lancaster. And it had to do with, you know, a lot of fraternity houses and partying and, you know, sort of the, the traditional kinds of tensions that erupt between town gown. We just don't have that here. And I am very uh, deeply appreciative of that. And I think that as a welcoming city, um, whether you're a newly arriving refugee or you're a first year f &M student, you're going to experience uh, Lancaster as like, hey, how are you? Where are you from? Tell me about you. And that's good. Well, that's really interesting because I think some people of a certain age would remember the relationship of the mayor and the president in Animal House uh, <laughs> to what you were referring to. Yes, yes. And I think right. that that's a very old narrative and, and, and that has not been my experience at all. And I tend to just think about... Um, you know, our neighborhood has been integrated with F and M for hundred plus years. I mean, this is not a new story. Um, but what's new, I think, is the ways in which we're continuing to break down barriers between the campus life and city life. And to me, they feel very porous, and that's a good thing. That's interesting. I want to challenge you, if I may, about the yeah. public and private thing. Yeah. Let's say Franklin and Marshall was a division of Penn State. Do you think anything that you've said would change? 
Um, if it were a division of Penn State, um, I think it would depend on the leadership at that local level. And I think so much of it comes down to the leadership. And so um, I think that if it were, you know, a Penn State campus in Harris, or a Penn State campus here in Lancaster, I think it would just depend on the people. Because I think that would be interesting around the country because this is a unique, Pennsylvania is a unique state. But think about all the town gown relationships that uh, that we're all thinking about, right? Sometimes they're public, sometimes they're private, sometimes they're large, small. And I was wondering whether or not, well, I'll throw it to both of you, whether you think the difference between being a public or a private school or a wealthy or a predominantly wealthy school uh, relative to you know some of your peers, whether that makes a difference. I, I'm going to lean into this first because I think that um, – what I just said is so important. It's about leadership and shared vision, shared strategic yeah. priorities. And so what I really appreciate is that, you know, uh, Barbara's job is to is to run an institution. She's got 600 and some employees, a couple of thousand students, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah. And, you know, if you just have your gaze focused there, that's where you're going to stay. But if you lift your gaze up and look at the community at large and you have a meeting with me or have a meeting with your mayor and say, what are your priorities? And you begin to um, envision uh, how those priorities can start to line up and can be braided together, that's to the benefit of the entire community. So I appreciate that f and is not is not so insular that they're only thinking about what they, they need to accomplish to be best in class uh, as a liberal arts institution here in Lancaster. But they're thinking about it from a broader perspective. And not every institution has that. In the same way, not every community has a mayor that is thinking beyond you know, what they need to be focusing on in terms of public safety and roads and parks and you know all of the things that mayors think about every day. There, but there is a bridge there, and it takes intention and, and leadership to, to find that. And, it, and that, to me, is the heart of a successful town-gown relationship. When, when there is a relationship between the mayor and the president, when there are shared priorities, when there's an understanding about what those priorities are and how we can advance them collectively. I want to build on that just a little bit to say that... Um, Fate threw us together at a particular moment in the in the evolution both of the city of Lancaster and in the evolution of um, the sector of higher education. Liberal arts colleges like us have some advantages for being independent nonprofits. We can be somewhat more entrepreneurial, somewhat more flexible, adaptable, quick um, than state supported institutions. We also don't have the safety network of being state supported. So it's very much in our interest to build a strong base with the entity that surrounds us. And again, Lancaster has really had a huge resurgence and renaissance in the last 15 to 20 years. So the college continues to rise in rankings. We continue to get better and better. We're in this wonderful, vibrant city that has really taken on a new life from the ground up. And it's a refugee center. It's 40% uh, it's Hispanic, mm -hmm. Denise, is that about mm -hmm. right? We have 20% international students. We're very internationalized. It is really, I, I can't think of a better partnership. We're 236 years old. Lancaster was founded in 1730, about 50 years earlier. This is, um, we are at a golden moment in terms of the opportunities, the ways f and can help the city and the way the city provides the surroundings for us to make a meaningful education for these really smart undergraduates. Well, thank you both. I think this is a, an interesting discussion. And you did point to the fact that this was a meaningful partnership. And it does sound to me like a meaningful partnership. Yeah. And so thank you both. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. If you'd like additional information about FNM or the city of Lancaster, please go to fnm.edu or cityoflancasterpa.gov. If you would like to send a note to me at the show, please go ahead and send an email to highereducationtoday at topcolleges.com. And thank you for watching. We will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.